So sick. beautiful dangerous playground that we're out here in and it won't hesitate to kill you at any chance it gets. Well just getting ready to head to Idaho and so just doing some inspections and change the oil and looking everything over real good. Pretty treacherous up there so want to make sure everything's in tip-top shape but uh had a fun day yesterday went and found Cletus and Brent from PFI and some of those guys doing race week followed them through the mountains shot some footage and then then linked up with Kyle from 1320 video he wanted to use some of the footage and uh in exchange he got me permission to land at the trek at Pueblo So I took him for a ride and um, did a little interview with them and it was a blast. Probably seeing this way after the fact because I'm assuming I didn't get the video done in time I had about one day. Well, that was yesterday and I'm leaving tomorrow for Idaho. So I don't know what you'll really see of it from my end, but I maybe I'll link some stuff uh, that they put up because it should be up by the time I'm editing this. You guys can check that out. It should be pretty cool. That was awesome to hang out with all those guys. So yeah, we're gonna head out in the morning and get up there in the mountains and do some exploring should be should be a good time i hope it, it typically is
All right, so I'm here in Pinedale. Uh, I landed, um, a friend of a friend uh, got in contact with me. His name's Nathan. He's got an S7 with a 914 and a constant speed TK1s. He doesn't have his 29s on yet, but he's setting up a pretty nice S7 there. And I landed here. We're gonna do a little flying today before I move on, or we'll see what where we end up. But anyway, we're gonna go do a little flying. This would be fun, super nice guy. out with pretty good weather on this trip overall especially while I was up in Idaho both the trip there and the trip home I had to fight some fairly bad weather um, following storms in I stopped at West Yellowstone uh, both on the way there and home and that was the area where there was a lot of weather uh, they've been having some crazy weather up there anyway and it's kind of seems like some of that is still happening and so uh, made it made it a little bit challenging a little bit nerve-wracking at times especially on the way home I was running out of daylight and had to follow a storm in as it passed through. I've landed and camped here three times at West Yellowstone on the way to Idaho, and every time it's just been impressive, that view to the west. You guys are probably sick of it because you see something like this in every video, but it's really beautiful. You know, was, like I say earlier, it was pretty rough getting in, up here today. A lot of wind, a lot of, a lot of storms, weather. And it's just dead calm down here and pr fairly chilly out, but just dead calm and beautiful. 
Um, I've never really showed, I don't think I've showed too much like the camp area here at West Yellowstone because usually I get here right before dark. We're just in a hurry to set up and then leave in the morning. But I've got some nice camp areas. I've got some fire pits. There's three or four of them around, maybe more. And uh, obviously looks like the RAF is a big part of this, which is awesome and not surprising. But you got this little gazebo thing here. They got some bathrooms. And, uh, the, and then they got these little carts so you can pull your stuff over from the plane. All right, well, making something to eat. So uh, got camp all set up and uh, my tent is definitely not a two person tent. I thought about the pre, uh, three person tent model. That's why I was saying it's gonna be a good two person tent. Turns out I bought the two person tent model. So it's a uh, sort of a one person tent, but yeah, it's a little small to like, can't hardly put any like my clothes bag or anything like that in there. So that's all right, we'll make do. It's camping, it's all part of the deal. It's all good. The next morning, got up early, blasted out of there, heading for Idaho. I was gonna hit Johnson Creek for a couple of days before moving on. Anyway, on the way there, I'm still in uh, Montana and flying through this big, green, beautiful open valley and uh, with a bunch of big, uh, green, rolling hills all over it. And get to looking, sure enough, some BLM land. Couldn't help myself. Had to get a little off airport fix there in the morning before moving on. And a uh, cool little spot to land on the side of the hill and then taxied up the steep hill up there to the top. Absolutely fantastic spot. The LZ was down there where it's a little lighter. Really pretty smooth. Pretty rock free and everything, so that was nice. But uh, oh, the views here, just 360 views. And it's just beautiful out.
All right, Eric Johnson is unpacking all my crap. Boy, I got a pile of stuff. It's fairly busy. There's quite a few planes around. Um, but the weather is great. Pretty friendly around here. Walked by me about 10 feet from me. <laughs> Hey, don't you eyeball that airplane. You just keep moving, pal. So Dewey Moore is the only one of the, what they call the big four strips that I haven't done. Uh, so I figured, yeah, I'll check that out on this trip and uh, see what it's all about. at Dewey Moore. It's, it doesn't stand out real well from the air, especially with the grass real tall like it is. I could see a couple faint lines, you know, so you could kind of tell, but uh, it's on the big creek and uh, we're gonna walk down the river and check it out. Um, like I say, no big deal on this one. This is definitely not the hardest of the four, I would say. Um, I'd probably give that to mile high just because it's short and steep, obviously, so there's some technicalness that goes on there to match the contour of the hill and not carry too much speed in. Um, no, not a huge deal on that one for, for a plane like mine. Obviously, some of the things that have been in mile high would be very, very challenging to do. But this one, um, it's not, I, I was expecting it might be a little rougher than this. It wasn't too bad. It's fairly smooth. Just the tall grass makes it a little weird, and that's it. Um, obviously, the approach is kind of funky, but you get a glimpse of it before you come around. Like when you're coming up, you know, by this this further away ridge, if you're coming around through here, you can see it, and then you're kind of dropping in around this, and I just carve in close because personally, I'd rather carve close and then turn and have more time to set up my last little short final approach then be, you know, turning right as you come into touch. Um, you know, it's just kind of preference on on uh, what you're flying and stuff, but uh, it really wasn't that tight. Again, in an agile, smaller, you know, cub-like plane like the S7, it's, uh, it's not too big a deal, but, you know, uh, and it's long enough, you got plenty of shut down, it's steep enough that it, uh, between the grass and the steepness, I mean, don't have to use a lot of brakes, but, um, so anyway, I'm trying to think how I'd rate the four, uh, after doing them. Vines is probably the easiest, uh, because it's 
low altitude. It's pretty long. The, you know, the approach is a little, little crazy and you got to kind of squeeze in between some trees. The thing that makes vines kind of funky is that it's like a roller coaster. It's real lumpy in there and it can cause you to not be able to get on the brakes very well and some of that kind of stuff. So, uh, but that one's really not too bad if you've got a plane that can handle the roller coaster. Simmons is, um, it's a little tricky. It's just tight. It's real tight in the trees. You got to it's basically, it feels like you're flying into a tunnel. So, um, that one, you know, you want some decent performance on that one. There's some dead air at the end I've experienced. Um, so I, that one might be more challenging than this. Uh, I don't know. This one and that one, I guess, are fairly similar. And then mile high is just a little bit tougher. That's the way I would put it anyway. Got it. So, here's the thing about doing more is you don't want to come up short because there's this big shelf you're landing on and it's uh you know it's a lot taller than it looks from the air of course so you don't want to smash into the front of this the strip starts you know kind of like right up in here Jeff made it in. I was over at McCall getting some supplies. He got in. He flew like, I think it took 13 hours or so from the time he left. Obviously, he made some stops. He covered a lot of ground today. All right, guys. Unfortunately, we've got a mission for the day that is less than what would be nice to be doing. We had an airplane go missing last night. They were camped here. They went into Lower Loon. They took off with a Cessna, I think, of their friends and uh, the airplane disappeared shortly after takeoff. Cessna couldn't reach him. Lower Loon actually called on the radio because they saw a fire on the side of the mountain and uh, the no response from the pacer. And the guy in the Cessna looked at the fire, but he was up real high and he didn't want to get down too low. He was kind of intimidated by those narrow canyons and hasn't flown out here much, I guess. But he's been out looking around hasn't seen anything nobody's heard from him or seen him and it's been you know that was yesterday evening and this is the morning obviously so um care caretakers jim just came and talked to me and asked me if i'd go down in the canyon and look and i said sure i'll be glad to so we're going to work our way over there and uh look around but fortunately it's probably not good news if there's a fire on the hill there was no lightning or anything like that yesterday so uh, and it all started right after they took off so Piece, putting the pieces together it's not a good sign so we're gonna go see if we can figure out what happened find something um they called search and rescue but nobody's heard back from them nobody's seen them so we don't know if they're coming or not so he wanted me to go look if i could and i said sure so anyway that's what we're going to do today unfortunately so jeff and i headed over to lower loon to start flying the canyon and it worked out well jeff's not as comfortable as getting down low in the canyon and so it just worked out great. He stayed up high, kept an eye on me, looked at the overall picture, and he was running the radios. He was uh, periodically making calls, letting people know that I was there, and then you know other people calling in in the area. He was letting them know I was there and that he was up high and what was going on, and it just allowed me to really focus on flying, which was great. However, after flying up and down the canyon a few times, I didn't see anything, no sign of fire, no sign of anything out of place. And I'm thinking if they went down right by the river, probably some rafters would have seen them or something like that. So I decided, you know, let's land at Lower Loon, talk to the folks there, um, hear the story straight from them. You know, and that's no fault of anybody when I, when I say this, but sometimes, you know, after the story gets passed on through a couple of people, some of the details get a little bit off. And I just thought, you know, let's let's stop and talk to them, see what they have to say, what they saw, since they're the ones that did see the fire first, and called out to the to the guys in the air. So that that was the plan. We went ahead and landed there to talk to them.
All right, so I'm at Lower Loon. I'm gonna stop and talk to them. This is where the plane went missing coming out of here. And they saw the fire as well as the guy in the Cessna that was with that plane, his friend. So I just wanna stop and talk to them and kind of see what they know. So I've been searching this canyon for a while and of course I haven't even found where the fire was. Okay, so we just stopped in here at Lower Loon, had a chat with the folks that run this place. Uh, very, very nice folks in there, of course, super concerned and upset. And they gave us all the information that we needed to kind of piece this together. So um, the fire was on the back side of that hill right there. So we were looking more on this front side on the main river where everybody flies in and out to, you know, to get in and out of Lower Loon. And uh, Hang on, I gotta run here. Oh God, the sprinkler got me. And so, uh, it was actually, they, it was on the backside, which I believe that's a box canyon up there. So I don't know if they maybe turned up that canyon and then that was all she wrote. I'm not sure because the fire showed up right after they took off within a, you know, a minute or two, I guess. And it's on the other side. So we're gonna fly and go look on the backside of that ridge and see what we can find. It just doesn't sound good. Oh yeah. No problem. Okay, so I just turned off my voice recorder. I didn't have it on. Should have had it on for you guys. But, uh, uh, okay, so I'm up here find the canyon on the back side of where they pointed out. I don't see anything yet, but there's actually a lot of ground to cover. It's really rugged, of course. It's not a complete box canyon, but it kind of is. It's very narrow and it's rising terrain. So, same principle, really. So if they turned up this one, which is what they saw, several people there said they saw them turn up this canyon. Uh, and then I'm trying to kind of just line up my trajectory with where they saw the smoke come up as to kind of where they would be on the backside, because this canyon goes on way on up somewhere. And uh, it is too narrow to turn around if you're real slow, no climb performance, mushing along, which I would assume that would be the case. So. Uh, I could see where they would have, you know, just come up in somewhere and, and maybe just run into the terrain if, they, you know, they're not able to outclimb it, obviously. So it, it all kind of does add up and make sense. Um, I don't see anything yet, but uh, we're just going to look at, I'm going to look at different altitudes and different, different stuff. I still don't see any signs of a fire yet either, so that's kind of interesting. The one side of the hill here is more barren, so I'm thinking, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna run it into the terrain, you know, you'd be best to turn into that and avoid the trees. But um, judging by the fact that there's like a fireball and that kind of thing, I'm thinking they hit hard enough. That that doesn't matter, of course. And you know, there may have been some panic set in, understandably so. There's a lot of factors, of course. So it's hard to say, but. I'm just going to loiter around, you know, at a low power setting so I'm not burning much fuel so I can just stay up here for... Oh, uh, no, I'm not seeing nothing. Yeah, I'm not either yet. I'm just going to keep kind of working up and down at different altitudes and angles. Yeah, there's a couple spots where there's fairly heavy trees that you really need to tuck under. Exactly. Middle for traffic, this is Heather at Lower Loon. Do you have a copy? This is Green and Silver Ranch. Are you calling me at Lower Loon? Um, how do you think I should follow up on this? 
Uh, I'm not sure. We'll share what information we've got with them back at uh, Johnson Creek and got access there to be able to get in touch with search and rescue. And if need be, we'll uh, send it your way for more information. Okay, copy that. That sounds like a perfect plan. I think it's the best we can do right now. I mean, there's some thick enough trees right in that area where it said it went down that if he tucked up under them, we're never going to see it from up here. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be waiting to hear from someone. Thank you, folks. Right on the back side, thought of that horizontal place. Right. About halfway down, right in the middle of one tree standing that looks like it's either dead or burnt, and everything around is green. I don't know if that means anything or not. Okay, I'll try to take a look at that. I'm coming down the canyon again here, just a little lower, pretty slow. Giving her a look here, it's floating. Yeah, it'll be on the south side as you come down. off what we know, we'll get out of their way. Yeah, they're planning on landing at Lower Loon and talking to them, I think. Okay. Alright, so just give you guys a little update on this search and rescue thing. Um, we went out there and flew around for, oh, I don't know, I flew those canyons right there for 45 minutes or something, and we never saw anything. But we knew, of course, that had to be... Um, where everything was going on, but the the search and rescue choppers showed up, two of them, and so we passed along what we knew about, you know, like which canyon it sounded like they went down in, and where we've been looking and all that, and then we just got out of their way, of course, because they can get way down in there slower and really look, and uh, unfortunately, they ended up finding them, um, and that was exactly what it sounded like, the fire was from where they impacted and uh, they didn't make it, but, which is terrible. And um, just a bad deal all the way around. I, uh, you know, there was some, there was some, there, the buddy that was with them, we met him, the guy with the 180, and he had been out looking for him till dark last night and then all day today. And I think he was feeling guilty like, you know, maybe he could find them and, and get to them, if, you know, and get them help if they needed help or something like that. I think everybody, of course, feels that way. Um, so it's not like a good thing that they didn't make it. Of course, it's terrible, but it looked like from what we saw and sounded like that it was probably a, an instant thing. And, uh, cause, you know, the plane burned, but I don't know this for sure, but I'm just going to assume that they weren't still there to when it burned and I'm, I'm gonna hope and pray that's the case you know because obviously that would just be absolutely horrid I mean it's hor it's horrible period but you guys know what I mean so anyway unfortunately that's the bad news um, they didn't make it and from what I understand the uh, it was a it was a dad and his son and the son was 16 years old so that's just um, it's just too awful to even really want to think about it you know so you know this is a beautiful um this is a beautiful dangerous playground that we're out here in and it won't hesitate to kill you at any chance it gets 
and it's uh it's that reminder again that you know um man it can go wrong in a hurry so we don't know exactly what happened um obviously it sounds like performance of the airplane was a big factor and it looked like they may have turned left up the canyon um that's what the eyewitnesses said down at lower loon uh, sorry i'm getting my tie down stuff here is what i'm doing anybody's wondering but uh we were told that there was that yeah they potentially um turn left up basically a box canyon and so you know there's a lot of theories bouncing around i've been theorizing on all of us have that we're over there looking and stuff trying to figure out if maybe they were trying to turn around in the mouth of this this that little canyon on the side of the river there and then go back to lower loon because it sounded like they weren't performing well when they went off the end of the runway they actually dropped down a little bit on the river so there's some potential that's maybe what they were trying to do i mean who knows right I don't know if we'll ever know. Um, maybe we'll we'll know something about what happened, so we can, you know, learn something from it. But just an unfortunate loss all the way around, and uh, just a real bummer. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys that update. That's what happened today. Uh, we'll get back to you guys tomorrow, and we'll get back and do some flying or or something. So there's some weather coming in actually, so I may move up to Moose tomorrow before the weather, and hunker down up there. That's really where I'd like to hang out. Uh, on this trip and spend some time so uh, i'll make that decision tomorrow I'll get back with you guys and uh, we'll go from there All right, guys, we're going to end off this one here. And I hate to do that after kind of a depressing segment there. I mean, that's just a rough reality of uh, flying up there in the backcountry that can happen. Um, my condolences to the family, and um, I just, you know, hope they can get along as well as possible considering a terrible loss like that. Super sad deal. But uh, anyway, stick around. Next video, going to move up to Moose Creek do some exploring on there. I go on the hike from hell <laughs> and uh, ultimately meet up with my buddy John up north and we fly the north country and have some good fun and some good experiences and yeah there's a lot more to come so stick around. I'll have the next video up soon. And real quick thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. Without you guys I would have probably had to throw in the towel on this deal. Uh, your guys' support has kept me going basically so Appreciate you guys. Um, I got a link in the description to some merch. I've added some stickers and a few things. Still no hats yet, but I'm working on it. But uh, check that out. And uh, you guys know the deal. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you shortly on part two.